these giant rockets we can walk right through them and you'll see we can look up and that's quite interesting i mean like let's say you're trying to give a science class right and you'd like to just show the students what it's like to be in a rocket what it's like for them to view um like a specific environment and you'll see over here something else before i continue is south africa does actually have an organization called sansa and south african and it stands for south african national space agency and you'll see over here it's been um, backed by the department of science and technology which is quite interesting and yeah we've actually helped with um i think it was curiosity for one of the test flights i believe they did involve sansa and something like that uh, they just got some stuff and articles on their website i do suggest you check it out um but yeah very nice very cool so, so i think south africa's got the second most satellites in africa which is i think nine satellites if i'm not mistaken and satellites are quite important because they help you with weather they help you with i'm um, getting information like traffic information population um let's say for example they need to see how many more people have joined in squatter camps I'm sure you've noticed that Google Maps isn't very good at updating that type of information. But if you have your own satellites, you can just easily take your own pictures and you don't have to pay other suppliers to get that information supplied to you. But yeah, so that's why it's quite important to have satellites and they help us just track, um, yeah, like population, animal conservation and all sorts of goodies. And you'll see that this is really great for also, let's say you've got a car modding store and you want to make sure that let's say for example um you've got like different types of paints that you'd like to try out some different types of mags for vehicles you'd like to try out then you can very easily bring them into something like unreal engine have your customer um go through different car models hey guys my name is albert Cito from apollo v and today i'd like to show you something quite interesting and this is something that we kind of been working on as apollo v and it's kind of this little environment over here where you can see that this is actually Unreal Engine. You can plug in your controller, you can import various 3D models, you can texture them, you can animate them, UV, unwrap, and all sorts of goodies. So right now, the idea is to try and create a digital space at which people can purchase items, play different games, and do a whole bunch of different things. But now the problem is, we do have like let's say photoshop and stuff like that and we can create physical items using digital tools so like in this case this is a cool hoonigan sticker that you can stick onto your car or whatever and we've got stuff that we placed on mugs and so on and all of these things can be created digitally and then also physically made and this is the I guess interesting part about the metaverse that i guess a lot of people just don't want to take into consideration or maybe just don't have enough i guess expertise in the situation but in this case over here you can see that with something like unreal engine all you need is a pc that can run the software and then also just a little bit of creativity and imagination this is actually just like a statue that I pulled through from um, Cinema 4D. And I just had like a bunch of little crayons that I just put into a circle. And in fact, like with these crayons over here, I'll just get the printouts. You can see that the cool thing about working with digital items is you can create physical items alongside them. So like this is like some photography that I've done over here. And the nice thing is, just depending on how much you're willing to spend on printing, that can all be down to you. So now this is a example of a digital item that we have over here. I just put together these crayons um, using Cinema 4D and rendered them inside of Photoshop. And then once that was done, I mean, I just brought them into and then I brought them into Unreal Engine and just created this weird little statue idol thing. And yeah, I just think it's quite interesting. And then you'll see that this um, shape or this building over here, this was actually a model I created inside of Revit. And just trying to test out the surfacing options that you get inside of Revit. And then also had like these really cool railing tools. And yeah, so I'd actually like to get certified in Revit at some stage, but that is something that I need to get into. And then over here, this is just a scene that I created inside of Cinema 4D because I just have this real interest in like architecture and interior design. And plus, 
we've got so much technology and trying to render this inside of Cinema 4D takes ages. I'm sorry, Max one, but damn, like it's really slow. Maybe it's just my computer that's slow. Um, I've got a AMD Ryzen 1700X with a GTX 1080. And yeah, it's done me a pretty decent service. I mean, the frame rate here is not too bad. Um, it does hiccup and there's a reason I'm walking in this very particular pattern. Um, just to make sure that we don't really get too many of these frame drops. But in this case here, like just putting together furniture and putting together um, interior spaces is something that I really enjoy because I just think it's so powerful um, that we now have the ability to actually use stuff like our computers. Now imagine if companies, and this is actually something I modeled inside of Autodesk Inventor, where I use the frame generator to generate a frame. And then in this case over here, this could be like a shop or something like that for the merchandise that we sell. Like in this case over here, we got these really cool hoodies that we do. And in that case there, we're still building out the website. You can see over here, we've got Apollo V. Come on, camera. Come on, man. So we've got a hoodie here that's got Apollo V on it. And then obviously with the vinyl cutter that we have, we have the ability to also not just make hoodies, but also generate um, stickers. So this is like a Hoonigan sticker that you can stick onto your car. And you'll see that over here on my PC is glass. We've got like a whole bunch of cool stickers on there. So it just depends on the design that you're looking for, whatever fonts that you want, Instagram handles, whatever. But in this case over here, you'll see that we've got the potential to actually start creating like little storefronts and little pop-up stores. And this could be also housing because in South Africa, we've got this massive housing crisis. And I'm sure in a lot of other countries in the world, there are housing crises where you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. And I think that we should just take into consideration our existing architectural techniques, um, like building rondavals and kind of just trying to reintegrate that into modern society. And I think that will just provide for a much more interesting environment over the cubicles that we have currently. And like in this case here, we've just got this um, inventor model. This was a jet engine that, that I downloaded off of Autodesk website. And on Autodesk website, you'll find that they've got, um, yeah, we've got like a link to a whole bunch of files that they've put together. And in this case over here, this is just one of them. And I just thought it'd be really cool just to put some pink detailing on there. And we've got a really cool like um, immersive texture on the inside there. And then just putting together like these art gallery type things. Because I really like working with light and how light interacts with different objects in a scene. So in this case over here, this is just some lighting um, I put together, it's probably not a necessarily a unique design, but I just think it's a really interesting design nonetheless. So just using like LEDs and you could just run them in the background. And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be that intensive on energy anyways. Um, and then over here, just some chairs. Um, some of you may actually recognize the chair. This is the chair from Cinema 4D's library. And in that case, they'll just put it in like an interesting space, I guess. Then we've got, yeah, the big boss with the big boys <laughs> it's a good song um let's not get let's not get hit by a copyright here youtube um but in this case over here um we've got these giant rockets we can walk right through them and you'll see we can look up and that's quite interesting i mean like let's say you're trying to give a science class right and you'd like to just show the students what it's like to be in a rocket what it's like for them to view um like a specific environment now, the thing is, oh, this camera doesn't focus very nicely. And you'll see over here something else before I continue is South Africa does actually have an organization called SANSA and South African and it stands for South African National Space Agency. And you'll see over here it's been um, backed by the Department of Science and Technology, which is quite interesting. And yeah, we've actually helped with, um, I think it was Curiosity. For one of the test flights, I believe they did involve Sansa and something like that. Uh, they just got some stuff and articles on their website. I do suggest you check it out. Um, but yeah, very nice, very cool. So, so I think South Africa's got the second most satellites in Africa, which is I think nine satellites, if I'm not mistaken. 
And satellites are quite important because they help you with weather, they help you with um, getting information like traffic information, population. Um, let's say, for example, they need to see how many more people have joined in squatter camps. I'm sure you've noticed that Google Maps isn't very good at updating that type of information. But if you have your own satellites, you can just easily take your own pictures and you don't have to pay other suppliers to get that information supplied to you. But yeah, so that's why it's quite important to have satellites and they help us just track um yeah like population animal conservation and all sorts of goodies and you'll see that this is really great for also let's say you've got a car modding store and you want to make sure that let's say for example um you've got like different types of paints that you'd like to try out some different types of mags for vehicles that you'd like to try out then you can very easily bring them into something like unreal engine have your customer um, go through different car models and you can see that if you're not interested in modeling your own things um, like in this case of here this is just Autodesk Inventor we can go through put together some different 3D models like in this case over here this poor camera is really struggling um, but you'll see over here like you can go through put together some different types of 3D models and yeah let's just hopefully that doesn't make too much noise in the video but you'll see that in this case over here, you've just got the capability of putting together your various 3D models. You can go eye properties, you can view what the physical mass is of these particular items, how much they weigh, how much area it's going to be taking up, a whole bunch of this extra information that wouldn't be available to you um, unless you actually had really great calculations. And the software can now like calculate stuff like center of gravity, um, you can do curvature analysis on your particular items just to see, or zebra, yeah, zebra analysis, just to view how the light would be interacting with your various, various surfaces. And that's pretty great for people who want to do surfacing for like vehicles and stuff like that. This is a very rigid model, um, but you're not really limited to rigid models. You can create all sorts of interesting designs using something like um, cinema. So like in this case of your, whenever you're 3D modeling and whenever you're trying to create various 3D assets, you need to have some type of program that's gonna help you create the textures. You need to have some type of program that's gonna help you create the 3D models. And in my case, my selection of choice is Autodesk Inventor for creating 3D models. And then also just using stuff like Photoshop to help with the textures and all sorts of goodies like that. And like in this case over here, this is just an example of taking a actual real life package and then kind of, I guess, upgrading it in a sense, trying to make sure that I've got all the detail in there for the labels, the barcodes, the works, just to try and give a realistic expression of what would be possible if that were to be redesigned. And in the metaverse, these things can exist very easily. We can create interactive experiences with particular products, with particular items. And this is just super interesting because we're living in a generation where we've come to a crossroads of human interaction with computers on a much more personal level. And I just think that we have the possibility of actually just creating just a much more interesting environment in terms of just the educational space can really um, be improved a lot by allowing students to make mistakes because that's the biggest thing is I was always so afraid of making mistakes um, whenever I designed something or whenever I was working with something because it feels like it's the end of the world if a mistake occurs but just through caution you'll become a lot better and just trying to take a lot of different things into consideration that just comes through experience and that comes from being able to make mistakes and i think in that case there it just allows a person to kind of take a better approach at reality because you can make a lot of mistakes in a computer and then once you're happy with the results you can then click the render button and then boom you have